Hi, everyone. This is a, a little bit of extra content based on a, a conversation that I recently had with Brian. We were talking about sensors and we were talking specifically about sensors for battery applications. Uh, we're talking about lithium ion batteries that are used in vehicles, commercial applications and all sorts of other reasons. And the fact that they are now dominant technology. But one of the things that Brian talked about a couple of times was the battery management system. And now I've heard that several times in the past that I've even written about the connectors that are needed for battery management. But I need to know a little bit more about what these systems are doing. So my first question, Brian, is battery management system. I know this is a big question, probably without one single answer, but battery management systems. What do they do? How do they work and how do they promote safety? OK, so a battery management system is basically the brains for the battery pack. Um, uh, your internal combustion engine has a similar brain that's managing all of the functions, monitoring uh, the sensor feedback, using it to control the actuators and the, com the, 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 the way it brings fuel to the engine and the way it uh, 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 exhausts that fuel, the way it uses power, are all it has a similar brain. Uh, but with a battery management system, uh, what you've got is you've got a couple of basic functions that you need to perform within that pack. If you have a lot of cells in a pack, they're not all the same. They don't all have the same capability. So as you charge and discharge the pack, you basically have to manage the individual modules or even the entire pack based on the weakest link in the system. So, and just to kind of give you a, a very simplistic analogy of this, um, if I have, you know, 100 cells in a pack uh, and my best cell, I can run at 3.3 volts, but my worst cell, I only can run at maybe 3.1 volts. Um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to manage that array with the weakest cell in mind. Because if I overcharge that weak cell, and I and I and I try and fill that cell more than with more electrons than it can handle, just so that I can fill all the rest of them that are are better performing, then that cell is is going to be degraded very rapidly uh, with successive charging cycles, and that is one of the problems we tend to have with these. Um, e-mobility products right now, as many of them do not have these uh, the sophisticated battery management systems. Um, so the very first thing that that battery management system is doing in a, um, a well-designed system is it is charge balancing. So it's making sure that I'm not overcharging my weaker cells and causing damage. And um, it's also in monitoring the state of charge of those cells, I'm making sure that I'm not over discharging those cells. I'm not draining those cells to the point where now they get up other potential failure modes from extracting too many electrons because there is there are some certain you know, certain mechanisms that it can occur within a cell in an over discharge environment. So basically what I'm doing is I'm managing how many electrons I'm putting in and how many electrons I'm taking out and I'm managing that across the array. So I'm monitoring current and voltage at various points so that I can understand um, how each of those cells is interacting with the system. Um, and then um, while I'm doing all of that charge balancing, and that's usually through a series of resistor capacitor network to kind of make sure that they're all even. It's kind of like, you know, you want to fill all the glasses to the same volume, which is the, the volume of the, small, the smallest glass. Um, likewise, you're also trying to thermally manage all of those simultaneously. So you're monitoring various points in the pack. You're typically auditing the pack with several temperature sensors. And we provide a lot of those. And whether we're monitoring the temperature of the cell itself, maybe the bus bar near the cell, or some other critical temperature location, we're providing that to that battery management system. And that battery management system is then controlling things like pumps and valves. Um, and if you see some of the more sophisticated EVs, you have something called an octavalve that is in the market today, which manages the coolant flow through and refrigerant flow through the inverters, the motors, and the battery pack, as well as managing the HVAC for the cabin, all simultaneously in one device. Now, the BMS is basically providing control of that subsystem, um, managing the pumps, managing the flow of that coolant, making sure that the temperature is right, making sure that um, as you're communicating to the rest of the vehicle, you're providing adequate information on uh, not only state of charge and state of health, but estimated range left, other information that's critical for uh, the vehicle's performance. And then um, also managing the charging event. So you're also, through the BMS, uh, making decisions such as when the charge handle is in, in, plugged into the vehicle. Um, you're communicating with that charge handle and you're talking to that, that charging system. And before you engage the high voltage system to start pushing 
electrons into the car, the BMS is busy talking to that charger. It's had a nice long dialogue around um, the current state of both systems saying uh, both are in good shape. There's no issues with any that would prevent charging or cause an issue if there was, if charging is to occur. And they both give each other the okay signal. And then they begin flowing current into the, into the battery pack. So all of these various systems, including the power to the inverters and motor assembly, are all managed by that BMS. That BMS is basically the brains of the entire system. Uh, it's looking at all the various sensors that we provide and providing uh, control functionality of all of the current flow, um, all of the coolant and thermal management of that system to basically keep it in its happy spot. And I think the key point here is that it's taking an active role. When we talked earlier about things like thermal runaway, you talked about battery management systems being intelligent enough to make decisions about whether it's isolating individual cells, whether it's shutting down the system entirely because of, uh, of a detection of a particular gas, for example, when there's a, an event, that, the early stages of an event that may cause some kind of catastrophic failure. The point is that the battery management system isn't just a passive um, charge balancing device. This is a this is a clever piece of intelligent machinery that's that's making critical decisions about the battery pack. Yes, yes. The the uh, power and the microprocessor of the BMS is uh, is really uh, uh, impressive. Um, it's basically got a digital twin model of that entire battery pack. So it's not just reacting to events as they happen. It's anticipating what's going to happen. So. It is looking at things like during the charging session. Um, I want to uh, control my charging session um, differently as I begin to fill those batteries up than when I try and top them off. So um, in the case of the BMS, the BMS knows at about the right point to say, you know what, I'm going to go from one uh, process for charging to a different. I'm going to control based on voltage or current depending on how rapidly I'm charging and then at what state do I want to stop charging? So all of this uh, control is all modeled in the system. And these models are validated in the design process of the pack and the vehicle. Uh, but generally, uh, you literally have a, a digital twin that looks at the performance of the individual components and what may be a system that can have a few hundred or a few thousand cells in it. And then being able to, to manage that uh, in such a way that um, I'm not only looking at the short-term behavior, but I'm also looking at the long-term behavior of that system. I'm looking at how it's aging over time. And then with things like the overall state of health, being able to provide information for diagnostics and service, being able to identify uh, potential failure modes before they happen. Um, so seeing a degradation mechanism and providing that uh, as a, a means of saying, I can anticipate I could fail something at a certain point in time. Um, and it's also doing some pretty sophisticated communications. So most of these systems are now able to communicate up to the cloud. So these OEMs basically are provided real-time data on how that battery system is performing and if there is an issue with that system. So, you know, as we move forward with this uh, industry, we expect that uh, consumers are going to uh, be able to get a report on um, the, uh, the state of their, their battery system, their motor, their inverter on their cars. In many cases, that's already happening. Um, and, and they'll be able to, um, to be notified, hey, you know what? There's something we don't like about the, this particular battery or component in the system. And, and we feel you probably ought to bring it in for an inspection. We want to check something out. Um, and it's really going to do a lot to improve the long-term durability of these technologies. They're much more sophisticated than their internal combustion counterparts in terms of being able to look not only at the individual device, but looking at the fleet. So with this metadata that's uploaded to the cloud, and I'm using a lot, a lot, of, a lot of terms here that might be uh, uh, thrown around uh, a lot, um, but if I'm an OEM and I can look at across my entire fleet and look at how it's aging, I can start to say, you know, this one is an anomaly. This particular vehicle, I may want to have it inspected because it's not acting like the rest of the fleet. And uh, being able to kind of look across the fleet is something that's very unique for electric vehicles, um, very new. And certainly we, we look forward to the improvements that it's going to provide us personally for the longevity of our vehicles and the value of those vehicles um, if we choose to trade them in uh, in the future. Because the more that we know about how much life this system has left in it, the more value it's got for the second purchaser. Uh, so in many cases, as people purchase an EV, 
Um, they may own it for, you know, five, ten years, and they want to move on to the next new thing. You know, they've got it's, the new one's got features the old one doesn't have. Knowing that battery is healthy and still has hundreds of thousands of miles left in it is really critical for the value of that car in that second uh, that second buyer. And that BMS is really what's going to carry the history of that battery system. It's not only whether it's been maintenance, it's how it's been maintenance and also how it's been used and predicting how much longer it's got for life. And that's going to be very useful in, in, in the field. Um, other features that the BMS has, which I think are really clever, are safety features. So if the vehicle is engaged in an accident, something happens, you crash the car. It will immediately take action um, to protect the occupants um, and make sure that the system is properly controlled. So one of the first things that we'll typically do is isolate that battery pack from the rest of the vehicle. So not only do you have automatic airbag deployment in the vehicle, but the BMS is automatically going to disable charging. It's going to shut down the energy to the motor and in the inverter so that you don't have high voltage outside the battery pack. It could potentially uh, be a cable that might short out against the body frame. So the BMS, um, not only is it managing the day-to-day -day operations, but if an emergency occurs, it can act in the millisecond time domain and basically blow relays that connect the high voltage cables to the outside world isolating all the energy in the pack to within that envelope. So it's a very, very sophisticated device. Uh, one more thing that the BMS is capable of doing is it can adapt to the environment um, as the environment changes. And I want to use a great example um, that uh, I'm going to pick on Tesla. Um, the idea that um, you have a, a normal performance environment and under extreme conditions, you may want to uh, change that. Um, so um, back uh, during uh, a, a hurricane event um, that uh, happened a few years ago um, in my state of Florida, um, Tesla was able to, uh, over the air, uh, provide enhanced range for their vehicles. So their vehicles could drive further um, uh, for a period of time. So the idea of being able to push this data up to the network is one thing but being able to modify the behavior of an individual system actively um, is another part of the BMS. So the BMS is also receiving information from these you know, cloud servers uh, that the uh, OEM has, and th that may modify the behavior of an individual vehicle um, for a specific occurrence or event. Um, and that is very unique. You can't put more range in a gas tank um, from the cloud but you can uh, perform this type of behavior um, or potentially uh, protection behavior um, with these new, more sophisticated systems uh, where this BMS is interacting almost seamlessly with its original manufacturer servers. And uh, so, you know, updates, over the air updates, uh, modifications to the control system uh, can happen literally real time while you're driving the car. And, and, and that information, uh, as it's shared, uh, continues to improve the performance of that system, which is really novel. So in the past, if we had an issue with an internal combustion engine vehicle, you had to take it back to the dealership to have anything worked on, especially anything electrical. Um, there are various uh, approaches that can be used now um, that can allow you to continue to operate a vehicle that may have an extreme experience in extreme condition um, just by that vehicle informing those uh, servers the AI at the OEM examining the data and then saying, you know what, uh, for this particular condition, we're going to make a small change. Here's the small change. I push it down. The BMS says, yeah, I can do that and goes and does it. And that is very unique to electric vehicles. That's incredible. Brian, thank you so much. It's been great to talk to you today. Thank you so much. Appreciate the time, David. Have a great no week.